Hello and welcome to Chandu.org. In this advanced pivot tables video, we will take a look at measures and DAX. Now, this is quite an extensive topic and I could talk about maybe 70 hours and still not be done. In fact, I don't even believe that I can talk 70 hours about this topic because I don't know so much, but it is really in depth. Instead, in this video, we will focus on what is a measure and how to create some simple measures using really simple syntax of the DAX language. Okay, if all of this seems very confusing, let's get into Excel and then I can make uh, explain all of it to you. So here is our sample file. Uh, quick reminder, you can download this from the video description. And uh, in order to create measures, and use the DAX language to make your pivot tables even more powerful, you need to have created the pivot table using the data model option. So either you have set up the data model and you're making a pivot from that, or you have added the data to the data model when you are creating the pivot table. So either of those options is still fine. This is kind of an extension to the distinct count tip that was featured earlier in the uh, in this uh, set of videos. So we will go and insert a pivot table. As a reminder, this is already using the data model, the call center data model that was built in the previous uh, example lessons in this series. So we will use that and then when you click OK, it will give you a canvas where you can construct some pivot tables. And uh, while looking at this, you can see that there are these tables that are available and um, and from these tables, we can now create a measure. Uh, just first uh, take a look at uh, something very, very simple. Like if I want to see how many calls we're getting by gender, we would put gender here and then we'll take something like calls and we would use customer ID or, or representative or one of those text fields as a proxy to count how many items are there. So this is how we have been doing it all along. But uh, this requires uh, having something like count of customer ID, which will show up and say that female customers have placed 3,420 calls. But in this method, we can only do simple things like counting, summing, averaging, etc. We are not able to really go beyond and do powerful things. That is where the measure concept comes up. When you create a measure, you are essentially taking full control on what calculation shall happen and how that number will be presented here. So to create a measure, as I said, you need to have data model based pivot. And then once that is there, you can right click on any table and then you can click on that add measure button. This will open up a special screen through which you can create the measure. Uh, a measure will have a name. So we will give this a name like uh, Nem, we can call it call count, but I have already created that. So I will call this as uh, count of calls. And uh, the way we will write this measure is we will need to think what is the uh, correct way of defining count of calls. Now, if you remember, the call table has one row per call. So if I count how many rows are there within that table, that is how much, how many calls we have. So we would need to use this special word count rows. Uh, and then see the table name calls. Okay, so count rows calls is the formula there and that will count how many rows are there. When you create a measure, you not only write the definition of the measure, this is following the DAX language here, that special function would not work in Excel, it is actually a DAX function. Um, but so you write the definition and then you will also specify how the formatting shall be. This is an optional bit, the formatting part, but it's a good idea because most of the time when you do it within Excel, your intention is that whatever you create will be shown as an output on the pivot table. So we can kill kind of two birds with one shot, which is both create it and set up the formatting. So we can say this will be a number of whole number type with thousand separator. And then now we have count of calls added in the table. Uh, normally the measures that you add will show up further here. As I said, I have already added call count. So I will use count of calls now and then we'll just drag and drop it there. We'll remove the other one. So same answer as before, but we now have a calculation that was done by ourselves to do get this answer. So count of calls, when you use that, 
in the context of gender it will count how many calls are there against each gender now uh, in order to understand how this calculation really happens there is a lot of background things that that kind of click and work together to arrive at this number and that is fairly complicated to explain in a short video so i will not get into the whole process of how the calculation happens in here i will leave that as a homework for you to go and figure out instead let's go ahead and do some more things we could uh, create total amount which is going to be uh, add a measure i will say this measure name is total amount and um, this would be sum of total uh, sum of purchase amount column so we'll say sum of purchase amount in the calls table table and the name sum is the formula to sum up and then this would be in currency with the zero decimal points is fine and then we can now add that little thing as well into the pivot table and then you can see how much money is coming through from each of the customers so we now have count of calls total amount we could go one step ahead and call calculate amount per call so this is going to be a third measure amount per call and this measure uses this very very simple idea of get the total amount divide it with count of calls but because total amount and count of calls were already defined we can reuse those measures so we'll say uh, total amount count of calls so this is where once you create a measure you can reuse that and then this will also be a currency with uh, maybe one decimal point and then we can add that third measure into the table uh, amount per call and then you can see what is happening by gender now once this is showing up there don't think that if these are not visible that number won't show up you can just remove these in between things and you can still see amount per call by gender you can go ahead and change the nature of this pivot table by for example adding education qualification underneath or you can look at this by individual department you can even remove gender so once you create something like amount per call you can that use that in any context any type of pivot table where as long as there is a uh, it comes up with a meaningful check thing it will come up with a valid answer and you can see for example uh, phds making service calls are spending most amount whereas uh, phds making sales calls are spending less amount so this kind of information can be easily explored once you create the measure and the measure is not really tied to that pivot table either the measure is now attached to the data model so that means if you go and insert another pivot table from the same data model you can use those measures right there you can put amount per call when you see amount per call you're saying 122.7 that means across all calls all genders all representatives and that's how much it is and then you can add by manager and then you can see how much you are getting by manager or by individual reps underneath the manager as well so that is how you can create measures now measures the the language that we use to create measures is called dax and it is a very rich and elaborate language just like excel formula language so in this video you have barely scratched the surface of what a dax can achieve but i hope this has perked your curiosity there is a little bit more dax in the conclusion video of this series well not technically conclusion but the last one as of now uh, in this series and uh, i recommend you to check that out as well where we construct a dashboard using all these pivot table techniques so check that out and uh, feel free to download the sample file and have a play with that to learn more about tags thank you so much for watching this video i'll talk to you again in the next one bye bye